UK driving theory test practice. When preparing for your theory test, you should be aware that there are several different types of distances, each one with a different name and meaning. These are thinking distance, reaction distance, braking distance, overall stopping distance. When answering a theory test question about stopping or braking distances, it's crucial you watch it carefully. For example, if you answer a question about breaking distance, thinking you are answering a question about stopping distances, you'll inevitably get the wrong answer. Let's look at these in further detail. Thinking distance. What is thinking distance? Thinking distance is the distance you travel in the time that it takes you to realize there's reason to stop. This time will include seeing the situation as it develops identifying that there's a risk and deciding that the circumstances require you to break in response to this risk. You need to bear in mind though that the faster you're driving, the longer such reactions will be here. What factors affect the thinking distance? Your state of mind. Are you focused and alert with your concentration solely on your driving session? ready for any possible hazards which may present themselves during your journey? Or do you find that you're immediately distracted before you even step into the car, therefore unable to switch off and dedicate the session to concentrating solely on your driving? Or do you feel tired and lethargic beforehand? Your driving experience and your ability to respond to hazards have you been taking your lessons for some time now and do you feel confident with being out on the road? Finding your response time quickening with each journey? Or do you struggle from a lack of confidence behind the wheel and find yourself missing vital clues about upcoming hazards? The distractions present in your car. Do you find it difficult when people are in the vehicle with you and more so when they attempt to make conversation with you? Does listening to music or the temptation of using a phone immediately distract you? Any possible impairment you may have. Have you been drinking before getting into your vehicle or are you under the influence of any drugs? Remember, this can also refer to those drugs that are prescribed to you as medication from your doctor as some can result in a feeling of drowsiness whereby driving a car is not recommended. Additionally, do you feel unwell and believe you will struggle to concentrate due to feeling ill as you operate your vehicle? If you are an experienced driver who is fully alert to your surroundings and not distracted nor impaired, your thinking distance should fall between half a second to one second. For inexperienced, distracted or impaired drivers, this will extend to two seconds. And a lot longer should the driver get distracted by a mobile phone. Note, you may be wondering where the thinking distance is mentioned in the highway code. Though it might talk about thinking distance, in effect it doesn't actually mean the same thing. Rather when referring to thinking distance, the highway code actually means reaction distance. Which we will discuss next. Reaction distance. What is reaction distance? This is the distance traveled by your vehicle in the time it takes for you to move your foot from the accelerator pedal and apply it to the brake pedal while pressing down hard in order to slow the vehicle down. What factors affect the reaction distance? Lack of driving experience, tiredness, driving in an unfamiliar vehicle, driving while under the influence, wearing the wrong shoes to drive in, during your practical test, you may be asked to perform an emergency stop maneuver. Your examiner will pre-warn you about carrying this out and will then slap the dashboard to indicate that you need to start braking immediately. The time you take to begin braking here will be your reaction time, with your reaction distance that of the time your examiner slaps the dashboard to the time you initially apply the brakes. Once again, if you're a fully experienced driver in a familiar car, your reaction distance should be around 0.7 seconds. With the less experienced or impaired driver in an unfamiliar vehicle looking at 1.5 seconds plus. Braking distance. What is braking distance? 
Braking distance is the distance that you travel in your vehicle from when first applying your brakes to that point whereby your car stops completely. What factors affect braking distance? Your driving skill, whether the vehicle you're driving has apps or not. The state and condition of your vehicle's tires. This can include issues such as their pressure, the wheel tracking and its accuracy, the quality of the rubber used in your tires and other such things like tread depth and even tread pattern. The state and condition of the road surface you're driving on. Road surfaces can make a difference especially if they involve loose gravel potholes or poorly tarmacked roads. The weather conditions. From wet and icy to dry roads, each weather type brings its own challenges for drivers to contend with. Whether you are on a slope, you will notice significant differences in your braking distance when going downhill, uphill or even when level. The quality of your vehicle's suspension. More importantly, how well your suspension is maintained. The quality of your vehicle's braking components. Crucial checks here need to be based around your brake pads, discs, shoes, and drums. Ensuring they are also maintained on a regular basis. The most important point to remember here is that doubling speed more than doubles braking distance. Even just a small increase in speed will cause a substantial increase in braking distance. Overall stopping distance. What is stopping distance? This is the total distance traveled while you think, react and brake. Everything mentioned above will, therefore, play a part in affecting your stopping distance. Why is information about stopping distances important? You can use this information to accurately judge the distance between your vehicle and the one in front of you. You can begin to understand how much of a gap you should ideally leave by how far it takes you to reduce your speed. You are more likely to drive sensibly rather than tailgate the vehicle in front. You will learn how vital it is to extend your gap to account for poor driving conditions. Finally, you'll be prepared for your theory test questions on the subject. Converting between meters and feet. Another thing you may notice during your theory test revision is how all distances are referred to in both meters and feet with one meter approximately measuring three feet. As a quick and easy guide, always remember that one meter is roughly three feet, therefore, you can divide meters by three to get feet. Multiply feet by three to get meters. Stopping distances chart. You will notice from the highway code that there is an official chart included which clearly labels and details typical stopping distances. It's strongly recommended that you work on learning this chart, as it will help you with your theory test, should you be presented with a question about stopping distances. Many people find that a visual aid such as this one is one of the most powerful ways of recalling detailed information, rather than having to memorize extended formulas. Yet, while this is a great method for some, a large number of people studying for their theory test will also want to access an easy-to-use calculation to refer back to. Stopping distances formula. You may use the following formula to calculate stopping distances x2 divided by 20 plus x equals overall stopping distance measured in feet where x is the starting speed for example if your starting speed is 30 miles per hour the stopping distance calculation is as follows 302 divided by 20 plus 30 equals 30 times 30 divided by 20 plus 30 equals 900 divided by 20 plus 30 equals 75 feet. Further stopping distance examples. 20 miles per hour. 20 plus 20 times 2 divided by 2 equals 20 plus 20 equals 40 feet. 30 miles per hour. 30 plus 30 times 3 divided by 2 equals 30 plus 45 equals 75 feet. 
40 miles per hour, 40 plus 40 times 4, divided by 2 equals 40 plus 80 equals 120 feet. 50 miles per hour, 50 plus 50 times 5, divided by 2 equals 50 plus 125 equals 175 feet. 60 miles per hour, 60 plus 60 times 6, divided by 2 equals 60 plus 180 equals 240 feet. 70 miles per hour, 70 plus 70 times 7, divided by 2 equals 70 plus 245 equals 315 feet. 2 second rule. You may hear the 2 second rule being bandied around by many drivers who have years of experience behind them. On motorways in particular, a 2 second gap is the absolute bare minimum that you should be leaving on such roads. This is all about keeping a reasonable distance between yourself and the vehicle in front that isn't always the most appropriate for those who struggle to visualize it in practice. Instead, aim to look at possible car lengths as your approximation when considering your overall stopping distance in real time. This is a more practical way to apply the required distances in meters or feet. The best way to do this, and perhaps an easy visualization trick to master, is to assume that an average car length will be around the 4 to 5 meter mark, which is around 12 to 15 feet in length. Say you are traveling to the standard speed limit of 70 miles per hour on the motorway and, according to the highway code, your stopping distance overall here should be 315 feet as a guide. This effectively means you are looking at around the 105 meter mark for your stopping distance. To be able to visualize this better, this equates to around 21 to 25 car lengths. Stopping distances in rain and ice. Finally, always remember that hazardous weather conditions will significantly affect stopping distances. Though they won't affect your thinking and reaction distance, you will need to be aware that your overall stopping distance will greatly increase when braking. If you must venture out in such conditions, remember to implement double the braking distance in wet conditions and as much as 10 times the braking distance when it's icy, at least. You will also need to remember here that when you attempt to slow down on an icy road or even when attempting a downhill road in treacherous conditions, the grip of your tires will at this stage be unable to overcome gravity and instead likely accelerate. More so, it won't really make a difference here as to what moves you make with your steering or your braking, which can be a scary moment for even the more experienced of drivers. Many driving experts will advise all drivers, regardless of how many years they have been driving to avoid such conditions as much as they possibly can. However, if that isn't at all possible, then caution needs to be taken alongside a thorough and adequately prepared vehicle for the journey which you can adapt to suit current conditions. Developing good habits Get into the habit early on of practicing implementing a decent-sized gap between you and the vehicle in front of you at all times. Along with building up your knowledge of how to calculate average stopping distances in all weather types. This will then certainly stand you in better stead and allow you to continually act on such information as and when you need to when driving in your vehicle. After passing your theory and practical tests. Once you have successfully passed your theory and driving tests, you may want to look at driving out further afield and get a taste of driving on the motorways. When driving on motorways, it is vital that you leave a large gap in front of you to ensure you allow enough time to stop or reduce your speed quickly, should the vehicle in front of you slow down or stop without much warning. Unfortunately, you may come across other such drivers who have no care or consideration for stopping and braking distances. Meaning several cars may well fill in such a gap during your journey, but stick to what you have been taught.